It's clear how much the Great Salt Lake has shrunk over the years, but there is something in the air that is not so clear. That is true. Tonight, new special Stan Spindle reveals the threats. Newly exposed dust and minerals at the lake pose to millions along the Wasatch Front. If you veer off the beaten path on the fringes of Leighton and Syracuse, chances are you'll find Kevin Perry. It's actually unfortunate how few people explore their own backyard. He's made it his mission to dive right into what used to be a body of water, but boats have long had no use here. The transportation of choice for this professor of atmospheric sciences at the U, a bicycle known as a fat bike, a research tool necessary to traverse Farmington Bay, and Kevin invited us along for the ride. And we are now at least four miles away from any water in Farmington miles. Bay. Water flowing from the Jordan River used to spill into this lake bed, but now the narrow channel pools somewhere on the far side of Antelope Island. The lapping waves of this former marshland coming only from the heat radiating off its stark surface. And that's where the real problem is revealed. What looks like a packed, hard, salty playa can actually be pretty fragile. So here we have a place with a very thin, shallow crust. It's very fragile when the wind comes along it starts to pulverize this. As we pedaled, Kevin pointed out again and again, dust hot spots, places of particular concern that he believes make up as much as 9% of the now exposed lake bed. You've got this exposed area underneath, which is a incredible dust source. And so the dust is dangerous when the concentrations are high, regardless of what it's made out of. Dangerous now to the young, the elderly, and those with breathing issues. Potentially deadly down the road, as this dust is filled with cancer-causing, naturally occurring arsenic. Ten years ago, we weren't talking about dust plumes coming off of the Great Salt Lake. And it may take a decade to turn things around. This is a portable wind tunnel. It simulates wind speeds of up to 40 or 50 miles an hour. Kevin uses his bi-weekly research equipped with a state-of-the-art dust storm simulator to educate colleagues, the general public, and really anyone who will listen about the ticking time bomb that's not far off. The blade is going to spin from zero to 6,000 RPMs over about five-minute period. I've got an instrument here that will measure the amount of dust that's coming off of it. It's my hypothesis that the longer that the lake bed is exposed, these areas will grow. So here we have the ring where it was sealed and that sand was moving around. And it would have been a lot worse, but there's still crust there. On this sample, we learned what wind speed would be required to generate dust from this spot. And we learned that this spot right here has a lot of potential for being a dust source. For a cautionary tale on Utah's unwritten future of the Great Salt Lake, look no further than 600 miles to the southwest and a century into the past. California drained Owens Lake, essentially poaching the water from the Sierra Nevada to fuel growth in Los Angeles in 1913. That diversion of water created decades of what was the greatest source of dust in all of North America. With the attention on the population center of LA, it was easy to try to ignore the toxic cloud casting a long, dangerous shadow. How often have you paid a visit out here to the Great Salt Lake itself? Even longtime Utahns will tell you, not often, if at all. And unfortunately, this is a case of out of sight, out of mind. But we're going to have to bring back water to what used to be Farmington Bay in order to preserve life as we know it here along the Wasatch Front. I was uh, seriously considering uh, a future name change for Salt Lake City to Dust Lake City because that was the future that we were going to be facing. That dire designation isn't how Kevin feels now with more than a dozen laws and state statutes put in place just this session to address the water crisis. And it's not just about the dust. It's the fragile ecosystem. It's millions of migratory birds that stop and feed here in northern Utah. And it's about generations to come, believing that this is still the place to put down roots and raise a family. Yeah, you know, we still have limitations. We have to have water to survive. We have to have water to grow crops. Without water, the population carrying capacity would have to be reduced. No reduction in population seems possible as Utah is the fastest growing state. So conservation will be critical to bring the water back here. If you ask, will the dust really impact me? It will impact everybody from Tremonton to Brigham City to Ogden, all the way down to Salt Lake City and Provo. 
Eventually the rains will return, but the question is, will this ecosystem still be alive when those rains return? And we have the power to make choices to put more water into the lake now when it's needed the most. Reporting from the Great Salt Lake, Dan Spindle, KSL 5 News. Interesting story, Dan, thank you. This mega drought that's hurting the lake could last another 10 to 40 years based on examples of climate patterns through history. So it's up to us to take action now to save the lake. And you will find a lot more stories under the Great Salt Lake section on KSLTV.com, as well as information on the Great Salt Lake Collaborative as we look for ways to save this precious resource of water in our state.